Tesla released a new letter to shareholders titled An American Growth Story. The letter focuses on Tesla's American roots, its impact in the American economy, and how the top four of the most American cars are Teslas. They even added a quote from Warren Buffett. They did this to encourage Tesla shareholders to vote in the upcoming shareholder meeting in favor of the move of incorporation to Texas and to ratify the 2018 comp plan. Today, let's dive deeper in Tesla's impact to America. I've got Brian White joining us. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel called Futuraza, and he's traveling the world right now in Europe. Uh, very timely here. Let's talk about America, Brian. Well, I've I've just departed America, so what better time to discuss it? There's a lot to this, and I think the timing is very interesting, and I'm glad you're able to catch me today. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. So, you know, whenever we talk about Giga Texas, uh, any manufacturing, any kind of business activities in America, this is something you're very familiar with. You've got a lot of facts to share with us as well. There's a lot of angles here that we want to look at. So let's start off with this um, letter that uh, Tesla sent to shareholders, and they're focusing on American roots in that letter. This is what the letter looks like. Um, you know, it's they're they're trying to uh, get shareholders to agree on proposal three, move to Texas proposal four, ratification of the 2018 award, and it's titled an American Growth Story. And as we look through this, you'll see that they really focus on what Tesla has been able to do to, you know, um, the economy in the U.S. And it said Elon hit every jaw-dropping target in the innovative and ambitious 2018 award, leading to staggering growth. We've seen what the leadership of an incentivized Elon can do to drive innovation and create value, protect the same value creation for the future. And in America, a deal should be a deal. We'll walk through this a little bit more, but let's pause here and talk about, you know, this is an innovator. You've got Elon, an innovator, and a deal. <laughs> you know, in America, deal's a deal. Why do you think they sent this uh, letter out to shareholders? Well, why overall? The easy answer is um, they need more votes. Uh, we've seen something like only 24% of retail investors have cast a vote, according to one source that Alexandra Mertz was able to share. But the bigger, which is, by the way, very high voter turnout, normal is 2%, I think, uh, or under 2%. But why was the letter sent out in the way it was? Why, why focus on the American angle? And I've seen a variety of theories. I've seen people say, well, we want to convince the American institutional investors to get on board. Let's uh, play for you know the same team here. I don't buy that argument. Their job isn't always to look out for U.S. interests. It's to look out for their, their shareholders, their um, retirees, whoever it may be. I think the reason is because it's easier to vote your shares in the U.S. than anywhere else. Uh, there are some mm. countries where you can't or where it's prohibitively difficult, where there's two, three, four steps between you and your vote. But in the U.S. with many brokerages, it could be as easy as you get a piece of paper in the mail, fill it out and send it back, or just scan the QR code and vote digitally as some of those slides show. So I think I think the reason for the America Focus, while it's all true, um, won't persuade investors in other countries to care I think it's to get the U.S. based investors to vote now before they forget, before the deadline and get it done. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that makes sense. Uh, it's a lot easier in the U.S. and they have been making tremendous efforts to go global. But this letter focusing on America, you know, there's also that little bit of, you know, it's very un-American what has happened, right? You have a judge that's overturned this Democratic shareholder vote. 73% had originally in favor of uh, 2018. And so it's it's a little bit of that. But let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about America and Tesla. So you've got the letter continuing saying, you know, despite having a signed agreement in place, Elon has not been compensated for any of his work for Tesla over the past six years, even though he led Tesla to significant growth in stockholder value. That's another thing I think Americans, you know, known for merit, known for, you know, you know, getting paid for what you work for, that, that, that that's definitely aligns with that. That strikes us and the many stockholders from whom we have already heard as fundamentally unfair and inconsistent with the will of the stockholders who voted for it. So 2018, Elon has delivered for stockholders and the American economy. 
15 billion profit turned around from a $2.2 billion loss, well, about a thousand one hundred percent total shareholder return since March 2018. 987 million the overall impact from Giga Texas to Texas's growth state product in 2020 to loan. Top four of the most American cars are Teslas. Uh, so Brian, can you speak a little bit more about the impact of Giga, Giga Texas and how American are these cars actually? You know, it's funny. There's a lot of, uh, I only buy, you know, I only buy American. That's why I'm going to buy a Mustang Mach-E, which is made in Mexico. I only, you know, if you look at the top 10 most American made cars, most US made cars, uh, the last one I saw, Tesla had the top three or four spots. Cybertruck hadn't been rated yet. And the rest of the top 10 was Honda, Acura, and Volkswagen. The big three were not on that list, in part because their cars are either assembled in Mexico or Canada, or the content, the parts themselves, so much of it comes from other countries. So these are the most American made cars. When I got my Tesla, somebody said, oh, isn't that Chinese? And I said, no, it's made in California. This is, there mm -hmm. is no closer car to, to, to where we live that was manufactured that I could have purchased, uh, except perhaps Arkimoto. I miss them. There's, and this is not just a US thing. If you go to China, uh, Tesla is one of the most Chinese made cars. Now, the, I haven't seen the actual rankings because they're, I assume most cars sold in the domestic market are made somewhere around 100% Chinese sourced parts, but they are well north of 90% localized on their uh, components in China. If you look at the Teslas that are made in Berlin, those are the most Berlin made cars, the most German made cars. Um, perhaps not by volume. I haven't seen the official final count. We know there are things that are imported. Things like the computer chips are not made in in Germany. Uh, and I'm not sure if it goes by value, by weight, how they measure it. Uh, but these cars are always locally sourced for the freshest uh, vehicles you can buy, because that's, that's how you do it. Uh, there was a second, uh, uh, another thing I wanted to mention on that, the people who are mad about Elon's compensation love to tout the 56 billion number. Nobody's worth 56 billion. And I could, I can see that argument. I can see that making sense. But you, but anytime I see 56 billion or 55 billion as the headline, I know the rest of the article is garbage. It's not 56 billion. It's based on share price. And the share price is quite a bit lower than it would need to be for it to be 56 billion. And that's not what Tesla paid. Tesla paid like two, two and a half billion, and not even in real dollars, but accounting dollars that just have to be counted in new shares. The company isn't paying him. The customers aren't paying him. The tax man isn't paying him. I'm paying him. If you own shares, you're paying him. That's why I guess it's fair to have the vote, even if it might be a little risky. It's us that are paying for it. And a lot of people don't understand that he hasn't been paid. They said, no, no, he has, he has. They're gonna make him sell Twitter to get back the money to pay back. No, no, no. The, he purchased Twitter, now X, long, be uh, long before any of these paydays could have been received. That's money from the first compensation plan. So he hasn't been paid in six years. And I would ask, what is the fair price for that wage if not two or 10 or 56 billion. If the answer is zero, then I know I'm talking to an unreasonable person. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. He needs to be paid the right amount. But let's talk about Giga Texas. I, that was a question I was asking you. I heard uh, somebody mention that Giga Texas, uh, how fast they built that, how big that is. It is, is it not the second largest facility, manufacturing facility in the US uh, right after Boeing? And I heard that they said it, it's the fa like the fastest build uh, since World War II. But this idea that Tesla is an American company and you know innovation in in America. And I'm about to show Warren Buffett's uh, comment here. Did you have a comment on that? 
Sure. So it is actually, by square footage, significantly larger than the Boeing factory in Everett. Oh, okay. Boeing factory is, I think, four and a half, maybe even six million square feet. Uh, Fremont was the biggest factory in the U.S. at about five and a half million square feet before they expanded it since taking uh, possession of it. And this is more like nine million square feet before we count the extension to the south, which is going to make it about about one eighth larger. So about 10 to 12 percent larger by square foot. It'll it'll exceed 10 million. So if you exclude that southern extension, yes, it's the biggest uh, building in North America. It is one of the 13 biggest buildings in the world. And the claim that it is the fastest construction of a building since World War II, I think is reasonable. It's a little misleading because nothing that big has been built. Other buildings have been built in the same amount of time, but all of them were smaller. Most buildings go up slower than this and all of them have been smaller. So I would say that statement is true and interesting, but not exactly gotcha. meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good points, Brian. Loving this. Okay. So let's continue on. Finish off the letter. It says at the end of this new shareholder letter, uh, Tesla shared a quote from Warren Buffett. Elon Musk shows what American produce what America produces. Elon is taking on General Motors and Ford and Toyota, all these people who have all this stuff, and he's got an idea and he's winning. That's America. You can't dream it up. It's outstanding. This is the letter. They show Texas is our home. That's the other thing that they're looking to get voted for, move to Texas. And then you see the Warren Buffett quote, Elon Musk shows what America produces. Elon, Warren Buffett, of course, was talking about how Elon is, you know, the epitome of America, right? He's the one that comes in with an entrepreneur, builds, creates, uh, if anything, he's one of the most. And then you see all of these, you know, world leaders stretching out their hands, welcoming him, speaking very highly of him, encouraging them to build in their countries. Here in our country, we got the government that is uh, and doing the complete opposite, right? They're trying to hamper him. They're trying to hurt him. This is an example of one where a judge in Delaware is trying to hurt probably the person who has the most to contribute to the American economy. Um, and, and it's just, it's just mind boggling. And it's also anti-capitalistic, right? So yeah, any other thoughts on? It's you a know, very the, unusual yeah, move on the, on the part of Delaware. Delaware is famously a corporate friendly country, a uh, com- state with corporate friendly courts. So I don't understand any part of that. Now it is easy to look at China and say that they are very supportive of electrification. Uh, I would say you could go a little further and say they require it and they will do anything to make it happen. And it doesn't feel like the U.S. is doing that. Uh, It doesn't feel like they're being supportive of Tesla. But at the same time, we have to look at the history of it. And they have been supportive over time. Tesla may not have been able to get off the ground with that first EV incentive of 7,500 to buyers without uh, the loan that they got during the one of the bills many years ago which they paid back in full early with interest and a prepayment penalty. But that loan was essential to their survival at the time. It feels like there's a lot of pushback today. And I would argue that they are not treated as well as I would expect them to. They're certainly not put on a pedestal as the innovators that they clearly are. These are the best engineers, certainly in the country, but probably in the world, doing truly amazing stuff. They're making cars at a profit while everyone else is racing to see how much money they can lose, how quickly. Even BYD is struggling, so it's very strange. Everyone wants Tesla to bring jobs there. Texas was very smart in bringing tex- uh, Tesla to Texas. They said, we, we guarantee we'll have a certain number of dollars spent and a certain number of jobs. And of course, they immediately blew past it. They've got so many, we're talking north of 10,000 jobs, same in Berlin. That's why they wanted them there. We believe that you can actually do this. That's why we're going to fast track your permits. Texas did fast track permits, Berlin fast track permits. Shanghai, I believe has permits. (laughs) Who knows, who knows how that works, but fast track would be a, a bare minimum. So I would say everywhere that they have chosen to go, they've gotten favorable treatment 
the only real favorable treatment in California was, I guess, the carbon credits and and the strict requirements that made the, but they could have gotten that benefit without being in California. The real benefit was the factory that they had access to and the talent pool in the Silicon Valley. And the people say, and by the way, I agree with you, this is kind of a un-American attack on on capitalism itself, and it really feels that way. And if you find anti-capitalist uh, communities online, you will find that they all universally hate all things Elon, no matter how good they are. I've heard the argument, but these milestones were guided for. We Tesla internally had said, we are going to hit all of these, to which I say, right, they published that information. We were all told that they were guiding for it, but most people didn't believe it. I believed it. You believed it, Herbert. That's why you and I both became shareholders. That's why we bought the stock is because we saw the guidance and we said, yeah, I get it. I understand the mission. And if you look at other articles, other uh, sources included in that letter that went out, Aaron Sorkin was saying, guys, he's, he's not just putting some skin in the game. He's all skin. If this goes south, he gets nothing. If this goes just okay, he gets nothing. So the idea that that it would cut it is crazy. Tesla brings jobs. Tesla brings good pay. Tesla brings uh, prosperity wherever they go. So I don't know nice. what the deal is. Yeah. A deal's a deal. <laughs> a deal is a deal. deal. And, and if you yeah. hate the guy, you still got to pay him. You got to still pay him. Okay. So this idea that this is an American growth story and... You know, I, the angle I wanted to explore a little further is how we've seen, right, the impact of the economy. We've seen how in America, all these factories, manufacturing has fled and gone to lower cost, lower labor countries like China, Vietnam, and others. And America was struggling for so long. Here's an opportunity to bring back, you've got this massive factory, uh, multiple factories now in the U.S. They're automated now. And he's been able to show that you can actually manufacture products like cars here in the U.S., American soil, and use American suppliers. That's what we mean by it's the most American-made cars out here, and yet be very, very successful, have low cost. Now imagine what will happen if you've got the bots. So you've got China, who is the manufacturing hub of the world. They are so afraid of what's going to happen. They rightly should, because as soon as humanoid bots come into play, any country can create anything in their you know, local country, because it's going to be so, you know, that's going to be the, your lowest labor you can possibly get. So this ability to onshore back into America, this is this opportunity for the U.S. to reward and support, you know, it's a race. It really is an economic war right now. And you can see that China stepping up and they're making big announcements about how much they're going to invest in humanoid robots and how, how they're supporting all of those humanoid robot companies. Uh, I really hope that this, you know, politically they can just get past this because this is a lot bigger, a lot bigger than just, you know, Elon is uh, is a, a bug, you know, a bother to us of what he's doing, saying politically. This is a big deal. Get the humanoid robots here. What do you think about the onshoring of factories? I think you just hit on some very important points. Bots are the great equalizer in cost in manufacturing. When we look at how cheap a uh, Chinese car is when it's exported, it's not that much cheaper than a car made anywhere else. And that's because such a small part of the car is built by human labor. And a small part of the parts is built by human labor. They're built by industrial robots and industrial robots get the same rate of pay all over the world. Maybe the guy who fixes it makes a little bit less. Maybe the power is a little bit cheaper in some places, but there are developed countries with very affordable power. So once we've got humanoid bots taking up all the remaining spots in manufacturing, not just for cars, but for everything, for clothing, for everything, the labor advantage in a place like China evaporates. We saw 20 years ago, 25 years ago, China realized we have a labor advantage. Let's use it. Let's become the world's factory. And over the last 10 years, what we've seen is them realizing we are going to run out of labor. We have a baby boom crunch looming that will make the one in the U.S. look uh, very modest in comparison 
because they had very large families up until a point and then very, very small families after that. And they will run out of labor before us. And so they're, they have an urgency to get bots up and running and they've been using all their technical efficiencies, all these hundreds of universities churning out fantastic engineers and the reputation of China as a copycat manufacturing country should have died five, 10 years ago. It's really not true anymore. They make a lot of times the same thing that other countries do, but better and cheaper, not because they're undercutting labor, but because they've streamlined the process and the product entirely. So I think you're right. Bots stand to be the great equalizer. If only there were companies within the U.S. working on them and actually getting that job done. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's vote, everybody. If you've got a share, if shareholder of Tesla, please vote. If you're, especially if you're in the U.S., it's very easy. It's a lot easier than it is. But by the way, lots of other I've been hearing people going, I can't vote in Europe. That's true, but also not true. There's a number of, you know, pockets of in institutional investors have now opened it up. I've made it a little bit easier for uh, European, depending on which country you are and so forth. So look into it again. Uh, this movement that the shareholders have been spearheading has been working. And we're seeing now many um, people in, the Euro in Europe able to vote as well. But um, right now, for sure, if you're in America, please vote. It's coming up right away. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you very much. You're just full of great information. Check him out on his channel, Futuraza. It is by far one of the best YouTube channels videos you do because you do such deep, deep dives that few are able to do. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Herbert. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.